Okay, so we've got some products in today. Um, as you may know, I'm trying to uh, recover some data from this IDE drive for a friend of mine. And I uh, tried some tricks, we'll talk about them a little later. But I ended up buying this SATA IDE USB 2.0 adapter. And I have my fingers crossed that it's going to work. I haven't tried it. I'm going to give you an overview of what I think about it. Maybe do a little review. Uh, in this video you should see a picture pop up here soon with a, a ad for Amazon for this device and the price I paid and shipping and such. So the drive I'm trying to fix is 120 gigs. This is 2004. So this is a six year old drive. Like I said, it is... IDE so that scares me because I don't have any IDE ports in my computer well, that's why I had to buy this thing so I plan on putting whatever I can recover onto this 128 gig USB stick data traveler cost me I think $22 again I'll post that the Amazon part picture but let's get down to it we're going to uh, open this box and see what's inside so looks like this is the main piece there's a SATA connector. IDE SATA to USB. So one of these is for three and a half inch, and one of these is for two and a half inch. I think this is for, this is two and a half inch. This is three and a half inch. Let's see if it says anywhere. There's a USB two header on there. If you call it a header, I don't know. Inside we have a typical power cord for a power supply, and then I think this guy is this is the power supply. It's got a strange little four pin connector so that you can, depending on your situation, you'll see the picture I'll put up here in a second. You can use that four pin to Molex. You can use that four pin to SATA power. And then there is your SATA data cable. And that's everything that's in the box. Some instructions and a thank you package. So, I may register it, I may not. I just want to see if it works, frankly. So this is the meat and potatoes of the thing. And we're going to try to get this data off this uh, drive today. So that's kind of exciting. And having a power supply around that, that you know can work with Molex or SATA, I think that's kind of going to, it might be convenient to have in the future. Okay. Let's hope we can get this puppy back to life. Or at least get everything off of it as soon as we can. Is this connection goes Molex to power supply and then comes with this power supply. So this is not the type of thing that normally I would do. This is the case that it came in. Let's hope the Molex connector is not the problem. <laughs> I am doing this. Wow. Give it all. At least I'll keep them separated with these plastic pins. Is that brilliant? Maybe not. That's what's going in there. Let's, we're just going to see if the drive spins up or blows up or the house blows up or what. Uh, one of the pins fell out. Uh, it kind of worked out okay. Hey, that's interesting. We are now going to connect this piece ever so gingerly, and it looks like it goes this way. Done. Okay, now I just need the power part. Okay. We are plugging in the power cord, leaving the drive here. Well, no fire. I think she's spinning. Not much. There's no life in this, I don't think. There's something. Not much. Oh, hold on. Here is the drive, the hokey setup, the adapter that goes to the back of the computer, and the power switch appears to be in the on position. We have plugged it into the USB port. 
we have no drive. Holy smokes. So there's this drive with the adapter plugged in USB um, with this janky thing and this drive that's never worked before. I'll show you. So after having the other drive work, knowing what settings are what to make it work, know which way is on for the power switch, knowing that the other drive did work after a matter of minutes, we're going to leave the IDE drive in right now and uh, cross our fingers that something great happens in a few minutes. And it's spinning. Oh, it's spinning. I got hopes. Okay. Okay. Because this added drive worked, and because this drive spins, I am still at a loss for what is wrong with it. I did a little, little research. I think I might need a jumper. I forgot about jumpers. This has been 15 years, you know, it's, a, it's an old drive. So I used my trusty old tweezers and squished those two pins together to make it a, a master. <laughs> Fingers crossed it works. Let's see. Uh, we had purchased this, which uh, seems to work just great for my SATA drives. No problem. But the Molex connector was garbage, and I tried to discover I had a few drives that I thought were dead that came to life. I don't know how much I trust them, but anyway. So back on track, I ordered this, which I will open pretty soon. Um, my friends. That would be the IDE side. That's the SATA side. So I'll take that out of the package in a minute. see the drive on my computer and it's currently copying over about 25 gigs but uh, it has also come to a halt at zero bytes per second it worked for a second and now it's making noises oh hear that that's not pretty I tried to copy over the whole drive. I tried several times and it uh, would get to like 10% it would just freeze. So I started, I didn't want to look through the drive, right? It's a friend of a friend's. But what I had to do was just kind of look in there and see what was like Windows files, what was necessary, what was unnecessary. Um, I decided, you know, it was having so much trouble that I didn't go for any of the music. I left that behind. But there was a lot of pictures, so I didn't go through them or nothing. I just started pulling them over. And then even with all the pictures, it would always freeze at like the same like 3%. So what I ended up doing and what I'm starting to do here in this screenshot stuff is I started taking just folder by folder. And I found out there was just one folder that was making it freeze every time like and giving me major problems like white out in the back of the computer. I had to reboot once. Like it's quite freaky. But, uh, yeah, so I didn't get all the pictures, but I got most of them. And every time after I did that folder, it would start to make noises and it would freeze up. It was kind of wacky. But I didn't do any recording when I was, like, screenshotting this. I was too uh, involved in trying to get it to work. So I'm pretty pleased to say that, you know, 120 gig drive, it was probably had about... It had about 80 gigs of data on it, and most of that was Windows and iTunes. And frankly, if you don't have your iTunes recovered from a 16-year-old drive, well, that's, that sucks. But your pictures do my best I can, and I'd say I got 90% of the pictures. There's 800 megs of pictures left, and I probably got about 5 or 6 gigs of pictures off of here and I got it folder by folder so this is probably just gonna freeze here on my screenshot but just trust me when I say I spent hours just working it folder by folder trying to get it sometimes being quite frustrated but I like doing that so anyway